Okay. Yeah, it should begin. Uh, so, hello. I'm Alexander Tivelkov from Mirantis. I'm uh, Randall Burt, Senior Software Engineer at Rackspace. Thank you all for coming today. And we are here to give you a talk about uh, our latest initiative in Glance, which, uh, which is called Glance Artifact Repository. And the main idea is that Glance is not about artifacts anymore. Images. Uh, not about images anymore, sorry. It's more about artifacts. It's still about <laughs> images. But it's not all about images anymore. Yeah, so here is some agenda we'll talk about today. And I'll pass the word to Randall. He may talk about the history. Yeah. So um, as we all know, or as most of us know, Glance started out as, as an image repository primarily feeding Nova with the image data that it needed to um, boot images, uh, to boot VMs and things like that. And that was great. And um, it did a pretty good job at it, at it. And its mission statement obviously reflected that in that its scope was limited to just that job. However, there's a slight issue as Glance and OpenStack itself evolved um, that many more initiatives were coming up to where, um, hey, we're also storing snapshots. That's a slight, it's similar, but it's a slight expansion of our mission. Um, we also have different metadata for I different image formats. Um, what if we want to actually use a, a s an image specification rather than some binary? Um, we also, uh, new, new requirements started coming in about indexing and um, uh, format-specific metadata that may wind up being maybe the same image is stored in several different formats. Um, and maybe images in the future, as, as the format of these things evolve, actually come in. It's not just one binary file, maybe it's several. Maybe you compose those images from several different pieces stored in Glance. So Glance itself had already kind of evolved to be a little more complex um, than it had initially been. Um, so as um, other projects like Heat and Murano and other things started getting involved in OpenStack, <coughs> they're also services that consume some other artifact that will um, then result in resources deployed on OpenStack. So we have heat templates, uh, Murano application packages, and uh, Solon plan files, Tusker packages, Mistral workbooks, and that list continues to grow. So um, as these things evolved, um, so too we believe that the mission of Glance should and, and is evolving. So Part of the driver there, um, I started working um, for Rackspace. Rackspace had an internal orchestration tool and they built a, a product on top of, and um, that was going pretty well. And then um, Heat gets incubated into OpenStack. So um, we start getting involved in that. And so we come up with this transition plan to move from some internal orchestration tooling over to Heat. Now, one of the things that we were kind of missing in that transition was uh, the storage and serving up of, say, provider blessed or supported Heat templates. So that instead of starting from your own, you could go to a catalog of templates and pull from them and either use them directly or modify them or just tweak a few switches and deploy some you know, supported or blessed or vetted architecture to do a thing like you know, WordPress or what have you, MySQL cluster. So we started that process saying, hey, let's go talk to the Heat community and say, Heat, let's expand Heat to store templates. Well, you know, that's not what Heat's job is. Heat's very good at orchestrating your infrastructure and configuration but it's not a catalog of things. Well, as it turns out in OpenStack, we already have a catalog of things. So we started a mailing list discussion saying, hey, um, 
what about adding this capability to Glance? And of course, there was a little resistance and a little discussion. Um, we started to attend uh, Glance mid summits and meetings and kind of hashing out the details. And Alex and I started getting together once every few months to argue about artifact life cycle and, <laughs> and what metadata really means. And so uh, I guess here is the culmination of that where we're, we finally found that common ground and now we want to share it with everyone else. So this, yeah, yeah go um, ahead. This eventually led to the fact that discussion was brought to wider audience. Uh, yeah. We did not, uh, we at Murano just saw this discussion and said, hey, we also need this catalog of stuff. We don't want about, we don't care about uh, heat templates, but we care about Murano images. And some of them guys came and said, oh, we need to store our plant files as well. And so Glantz uh, didn't know about it, anything. But then the technical, com technical co committee came and said, OK, please, coordinate your efforts and start working in a single place. And then we said, OK, but that now we need a new mission statement for this catalog stuff. And here is a new Glantz mission statement, which has been approved by technical committee during the Juno cycle. And now it says that Glance is not about images anymore. It should provide the services for storing, uploading, and discovering data assets that are meant to be used by other OpenStack services. So this is important. This is not just a storage of pretty much everything. This is a storage for something which is used by other OpenStack services, not by end users, not by, I don't know, non-OpenStack services or some other third-party components, but particular catalog of objects which are used by OpenStack. Same as Nova uses heat images, other services will come to, to use artifacts stored in the catalog. So these artifacts have some properties which identify them as being an artifact. The, the most important thing is that it is a binary, uh, uh, binary data accompanied with a metadata. So the uh, data has some definition, some description, and the structure of this is fixed. It's not just uh, blobs like you can put in Swift. This is blobs of particular type accompanied with particular definitions and descriptions with some constraints enforced. And another important moment is the thing that these objects are immutable. What we like Glance for, for storing Nova images, is that once we have uploaded the image there, it's there. Uh, it's fixed, and nobody can do anything bad with it. We have an ID which identifies this particular set of bytes, and you can trust that when querying the image by this ID, you'll get the proper, uh, proper approved image which was there at the moment when it was uploaded. So nobody, nobody tangles with the store, nobody modifies the images, nobody tries to attack you, nobody tries to substitute the image with something wrong. That's what we want to, to retain for artifacts. The artifacts remain immutable during their life cycle. I'll touch that a little, bit, a, a little bit later. But the most important stuff is that the users should know that they're immutable and that once it's published, it becomes, uh, becomes fixed in, the, uh, in, in all its life cycle. Also, the artifacts may have versions, which is also good when you have a long, prolonged life cycle for the artifacts, which may, uh, which may still be changed for some reason, but at that moment, we, in, instead of modifying the existing artifact, we simply publish a new version, which is still discoverable, and the changes between different versions are discoverable and clearly understood to the end users. So this is the structure of uh, what we call uh, artifact metadata. The important stuff here is that it's not just a number of key value pairs as we had for images. We still could publish additional properties in, uh, in Glance for images, but they were just key value pairs uh, with string values stored without any constraints, without any expectations we, moved, uh, we may have uh, about the image. Now we have a fixed structure which is defined by, uh, by the project which is going to consume the artifacts. So there are some common properties which are common for all the artifacts. Well, they're 
regular, regular stuff like name, version, description, uh, authorship information, and so on. But the most important part is this type-specific properties, which are defined by the, uh, by the artifact type, by the service which is going to consume the artifact and knows what to expect of it. For example, for regular images, uh, there, are there are stuff like min RAM, max RAM, min CPU count, well, the data which is meaningful for Nova, and Nova knows how to treat it. For other kinds of artifacts, uh, these uh, specific properties may be, well, for example, for heat, this may be a template format. They have different template formats, and they know how to process a template based on its format, so they will probably want to store this property as part of the artifact metadata. For Murano, we have similar stuff like uh, application categories and uh, various kinds of uh, specific keywords which identify the application in catalog. And these are not just string values. They may have uh, different types, differ different uh, constraints uh, applied on these values, and various kinds of validation logic which may, which may enforce some specific rules on this particular, on this particular artifact. The important thing is that this uh, schema for these properties is discoverable. So any project which is going to consume this particular artifact type sh uh, should be able to fetch the schema and validate its own data and the data it receives from user and the data it's going to publish into the catalog against the schema and uh, make sure that it's going to publish a valid artifact. So which actually um, becomes a very important aspect of the next feature of artifacts is that artifacts can um, and, and oftentimes do have dependencies on one another. And these dependencies can be um, against artifacts of the same type or artifacts of different types. Um, and they can either be explicit, right, where, hey, I am a heat template and I've written it in such a way that I depend on a very specific image to be available. Um, these artifacts can have, or um, I'm a Murano package, and I depend on a very specific heat template being available, um, so that those dependencies between those artifacts are explicit, so we can do things like um, pre-validation and guaranteeing that, hey, if you go and pull this artifact down, you know that the pieces that it needs will also be available. And you can either pull and deal with that artifact atomically as itself, or you can ask the artifact repository to say, give me this artifact and all the things that it depends on. So that's very handy. But also, because of this known metadata, you can also have what we call a dynamically evaluated references, where, hey, I depend on you having a heat template that expresses this particular type of architecture, or I depend on having a Murano package that will materialize uh, MySQL or something like that. Very, you know, not a specific one, just that this has to be in the artifact repository somewhere. So that becomes very uh, valuable and powerful in saying, hey, I'm, I may need some other bits and pieces, but you can discover what will actually meet those needs at runtime. So uh, you can also have. Uh, uh, depend, uh, a dependency chain of relationships through um, A depends on B, depends on C, and you can either guarantee that is in, that integrity is maintained and get them all at the same time and deploy them so that they're available. Cool. Yeah. Oh, binary, you did it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the other part, and this was fed in for some of the, um, from some of the requirements that Glance was already thinking about or working with is that artifacts just aren't necessarily one thing. They're not a single blob of data. They can be multiple blobs of data that are composed when you grab the artifact. And um, what these are and how many you can have and uh, how they relate to one another are also de uh, described in the artifact description itself. Um, they are uh, stored in the same, using the same backend storing mechanism that Glance already has. Um, some, of the, um, some of the work is moving in the direction of having stores specific for a particular artifact type, like optimized for a particular artifact type. You might not need something, uh, 
you may need something simpler for heat templates or, or, or optimized for a different uh, uh, streaming model for heat templates that you would for images or for Murano packages or things like that. So, um, and each of these can still be used by other components of OpenStack as well. Yeah, there is some confusion here sometimes when we, yeah. when we, when, when, when we speak about this feature. Uh, some people confuse the artifact dependencies and this artifact composition of multiple blobs. So the difference is that when the artifact is composed of multiple blobs, it still remains the, say, uh, the single object which is self-sufficient as an artifact. Partial blobs are not self-sufficient. They just complement each other in some different ways as different components of OpenStack may use it to pursue the same goal. For example, if you have an application published in a catalog and there are some uh, scripts which are going to be deployed, uh, executed on virtual machines, for example, during the publishing and deployment of this application. Uh, so the scripts may be part of, may be a separated part, separated blob which is uh, accessed by from virtual machine without the need to download everything else, which is going to be executed, for example, by heat orchestrator. And at the same time, uh, at the same time there may be screenshots or icons or some user-facing information that's going to be displayed in Horizon or in even in some other specific dashboard, which is used for this particular application for this particular type of service which deploys this application. It, it may be either heat, uh, heat uh, uh, UI, how you call it, uh, uh, the name of the heat, heat, heat UI, um, temper, or what's, what's yes. the name? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's, uh, it's temper. It's something heat related. Yeah, heat related, yeah. Or it may be Murano dashboard, or it may be Mistral dashboard, mm -hmm. something which is integrated in Horizon right. but is user facing. We don't, we don't need their service itself to download the content which is intended to be displayed for end users in Horizon. And at the same time, we don't want Horizon to download, I don't know, the images intended <laughs> to be run in Nova. So we have separated these binary objects and uh, provide an API to download them, Im download them independently. However, they all share the same life cycle of an artifact. While the independent artifacts, which are just connected with relations, still have independent life cycles and uh, may live their own lives. So speaking about artifact life cycle, uh, it all starts when we create an artifact. Unlike images, which are quite atomic in glance, uh, artifacts, as they're composed of multiple, uh, multiple uh, blobs, may be created in some kind of iterative process. I just call some uh, glance API saying, okay, I wanna create an artifact. It creates an artifact draft, kind of a, kind of a draft which, is, which says that this, this is a placeholder in database, it doesn't have any blobs, it doesn't have any metadata associated, it's just in creating state. And then I'm using the APIs to iteratively upload the data, set, them, uh, set the properties, uh, type specific ones, validate them, establish the relations to other artifacts, set tags, and so on, so everything which is uh, which is supposed to be uh, the land of the developer who creates or publishes this artifact. Not necessarily developer, but the owner of artifact. It's not supposed to be used by others at this point. But then the artifact is published. Publishing means validating that everything is correct and then fixing, uh, fixing everything which is supposed to be immutable. After this point, immutable properties may not be modified. After this point, the data which has been uploaded to the artifact as blobs is guaranteed to be fixed and never be touched by everyone else. And the relations between artifacts are established at this point as well. So if I have a published artifact and there is an, a relation to this artifact, I am guaranteed that this relation will be never changed and the artifact resides in its current state and all other artifacts which depend on it may be sure that this dependency will not break. However, this iterative process of first creating the artifact step by step and then publishing it is not the only one available option. There is a thing called import and export. Uh, they're defined by the plugins, I'll talk about them a little bit later, and this process allows us to create uh, some custom logic, allow, I mean, uh, allow to the developers of artifact types to define the custom logic which allows to specify all the properties, upload all the data in a single step. For example, there will be an API which allows to upload a single zip file 
or maybe not, not, not necessarily zip, but some archive which contains all the blobs, some textual definition of artifact properties, and execute some specific logic which will discover artifact dependencies inside the repository and establish the references to them, and then immediately validate it and publish. So as a single API call, the artifact will become published and activated. And then one more step in artifact lifecycle is important one, deactivation. We don't want to uh, allow users to spam others or to, uh, I don't know, provide some malicious artifacts which may contain viruses or some, some bad code. It's a catalog after all. So any users may upload artifacts and there may be situations when they share these artifacts with others. If we find or the operator finds that something is wrong with artifact, that, it is, that it's reported as inappropriate, is reported as containing something, something bad, the operator may deactivate the artifact and investigate it, uh, what's going on with it without the artifact being exposed to others. Deactivated artifacts are not accessible to everybody except administrators. Even the owner is not able to modify it or somehow change what's, what's inside. Even the mutable properties are not, not changeable at this point. If, the if there was a false alarm and artifact is still, is still fine, it may be reactivated back or it may be completely deleted if the administrator finds that there are some problems with that. So something about defining the type. Uh, this is important because, well, a lot of, a lot of you are develop developers. So a lot of you work for different projects uh, which are going to use artifacts at some moment, probably. Because you'll need to store something in the catalog and to be able to define this metadata structure, to define the life cycle of artifacts, to define this import and export operations, and so on. So this is for you. The idea is that we are implementing this in a plugin-based manner. So every, uh, every artifact type is represented by a Stevedore plugin. Stevedore is a common library in OpenStack for defining plugin-based architectures. And it's actually a Pythonic type which allows to define uh, type-specific properties, blob kinds, relations as Python attributes with some constraints enforced using the spe special classes which comes bundled with uh, Glance library. As a result, all the developers will be able to create their own artifact types implementing specific interface interfaces and publish them as Glance plugins. Glance will come bundled with plugins for integrated OpenStack projects, such as uh, for heat, such as uh, images, when images finally become also type of artifact. And then uh, all other projects which are integrated in OpenStack and need to use uh, Glance artifact repository will have their plugins bundled with the Glance itself. But the OpenStack world is not limited to just integrated projects. Projects. There are StackForge projects and there are other projects which, is, which are intended to be used with OpenStack but not yet integrated into the primary release. So there will be a way to create artifact type specific plugins for that projects and publish them in a separate repository, same as we publish StackForge applications under the StackForge on GitHub. So there will be plugins for these projects. You, as the developers, will create and maintain them. And when your project gets incubated into OpenStack, that plugins will be incubated into the Glance. Uh, just a, uh, this is a similar model that we use in the Heap project as well. We have a set of plugins that extend Heap functionality using a very similar mechanism, whereby non-integrated projects can still kind of uh, implement their own uh, integration with Heat. Um, and it's not, and it's done in a pluggable manner so that you can stand up your own version of heat that supports whatever it is you want. And this is a big, big strength of the artifacts as well, that you don't necessarily have to wait for uh, integration, and you may not be interested in integration, um, but you can still take advantage of, of this feature without necessarily having to be, you know, at a particular path along um, your uh, integration. Right. Here is a high-level architecture diagram. Well, there is nothing special here. The most important stuff is that there are uh, Pythonic clients for the particular, uh, particular projects like Heat client or Murana client or Mistral client or Nova client 
which are going to use the artifacts of the particular type, and they will just use glance client as a, as a dependency, as a reference, and they will just wrap their glance client for fetching the particular artifact types from glance storages. Everything else remains the same. We just integrate this plugin layer behind the primary glance API, and all other components of Glance remain at the same place. We have the backend stores, we have database, we have all the notification layers, policy enforcements, and all the stuff. I think Randall will talk yeah. about it a little bit. And, and that was kind of a big part of the motivation for once, we, once the discussion was had about um, having it at Glance that it didn't just fit from sort of a mission perspective or a conceptual perspective. From an architectural perspective, it made a lot of sense. There were a lot of things that Glance does that made sense for artifacts, like the multiple backing stores, because again, once you can optimize for a particular artifact type, Glance can kind of already support that. Uh, Glance store, um, which is actually now Glance itself uses, Right? Yes, it's an independent project, it's, but it's Glance It's an independent uses project, it. but Glance itself even uses it. Um, you can use that to, to have direct access to your backing stores. Um, policies for access we need. Uh, the ability for you to upload uh, a particular artifact of a particular type and limit that access to just you, share it with others. Um, those are all things that we kind of wanted for artifacts, and it turns out, well, Glance was either at the time already working on them or had plans to work on them as well. So um, it just became a really good fit, not just because of the mission, but also the way Glance worked at the time or was, was going to work. So um, <clears throat> one of the things that when we started kind of talking about this, the, the, the vision was that it would all be kind of part and parcel of the same service. Um, but we, I think, quickly kind of relatively qu quickly realizes there are some interactions between services and different artifacts, most notably, let's say, Nova and images, that really have to have a very optimized path. And if Nova is trying to pull images from Glance, and meanwhile, you know, 10,000 other users are, are, are also querying or uploading their heat templates, that, that, may impact, um, that may impact actual, you know, booting VMs. And, we kind of want to avoid that if we can, but still have the capability to, if you wanted to, stand up a service that's running both artifact repository and traditional, uh, the traditional image service. So um, we're doing the work now to kind of make sure that we can deploy Glance in, in several configurations and make sure that this is very modular so that each individual um, instance of an artifact repository can be configured in independently so its backing store is optimized for the type of artifacts you want to serve and that doesn't cross the line where you're actually interrupting other services that are also trying to grab their own artifacts from the service. So this, may, this could result in you having many different glance endpoints in your catalog that are very artifact specific. And that goes into, um, Alex was just talking about the different Pythonic clients uh, using uh, a dependency on Glance to say, um, discover their own artifacts. Well, because this will be in the catalog and it also will be explicit, then you can also, it doesn't mean that, okay, if I'm gonna run Python heat client, then the cloud that I'm going against not only has to support heat, but it also has to support the heat template artifact types. Because these are discoverable, we can also fail or, or uh, support or not support that in the clients very dynamically as well. So that is a big, um, big plus there. And we don't basically make the Nova guys mad because heat templates are making their VM times go through the roof. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what's going on with this initiative now? Yeah. So the current development is in active progress. Uh, we actually wanted to land something in Juno. <coughs> Unfortunately, we couldn't due to a large amount of work, but we expect the first working prototype to be uh, here in a couple of weeks. And we definitely, land, uh, definitely want and plan to land the basic functionality, I mean, but basic, I mean, uh, complete, but still with some possible improvements, to land it in Kilo. 
Uh, in Kilo, we are going to have this artifact repository with multiple backend storage. We're going to have the dependency relations between them. We are going to have uh, Python Glance client supporting uh, artifact fetching. And we are going to have this import and export uh, actions available for the artifact type developers. We'll have this framework for developing artifact types in declarative manner. And we'll, we'll have the ways to uh, define uh, uh, what particular clients for Python project client to use Python Glance client. Uh, at the same time, we are not going to uh, make images artifacts at this point. The image, imaging, imaging API will remain intact for the whole kilo cycle. It will leave at the same endpoint and as it leaves now in V1 images or V2 images API branches of Glance. By the way, we are going to deprecate V1 in Kilo, so <laughs> most probably it's time to start using V2 if you were using uh, Glance V1 before. But images, for now, will remain just images, not artifacts. Everything else will, uh, will become artifacts, and at, at some point in future, maybe in the next release cycle or the release cycle afterwards, uh, we will have something like Glance API version 3, which will treat images as artifacts. Uh, meanwhile, we have a design session today dedicated for artifact development. It's in the, the, in the design, uh, design summit area in uh, Meridian in Duffy. So it's on 4.40. If any one of you is interested in participating in the active development of artifacts feature, please feel free to stop by and ask questions and participate in the design decisions. And actually, for now, I think that's all, and we are ready for questions about artifacts. And uh, there should be mics in the middle if you want to step up to those, uh, if you have any questions. Nobody from Nova wants to yell at us? Well, okay. Not me. All right. It's <laughs> actually, something pretty simple. Versioning of artifacts or it's just even I images. Right? You, you added metadata, but... In your conception, how would you address? Uh, yeah, we do address this. So uh, the version of the artifact is part of metadata fields. So we have this uh, version as a basic property of each artifact. And we follow the same var notation, which allows to specify the version as uh, three numeric fields, like major, minor, and revision, plus some uh, labels and metadata definitions for the build, like building for or alpha, beta, or release candidate release, and so on. So we support this as a basic property for each and every artifact. And actually, the combination of artifact name and artifact version is supposed to be unique within the particular artifact type. So if I have image, let's say, with the name Ubuntu and version 1204, then this is supposed to be unique uh, and uh, no other combination of the same name and version may be uploaded. Maybe that's not the best example because, well, there may be different, uh, different images with different formats and so on, but you've got the idea. So we have well, the... And that's why you can have the, that extra tagging information yeah. as well. Yeah, so we actually have this uh, concept of querying the uh, latest version of the particular artifact. As Randall has said, we have this dynamic referencing concept when, where you're able to reference uh, something not strictly by specifying the identifier of artifact, but as a kind of a query which says, I want something which satisfies my condition. This condition may be, give me the latest version of artifact having this name and this property and this tag and so on. Or, or, or nothing, le nothing earlier than this version, right? Maybe, oh, I know that the library that I need wasn't at the right version at 1204. So anything greater than 1204 will work for me. And you can specify that in your dynamic dependency. Yeah, same as Python uh, requirements, yeah. right? You may specify uh, like uh, some inequality operators which identify the version range which you're interested in, and it will return you the latest version which falls inside this range. Same goes for artifacts. As we are storing metadata not only as strings, but uh, as particular data types, as integers, as versions, as booleans, as floating point values, you can specify queries which allow you to set the ranges for values or greater than, uh, greater than equal, like that. So version is just one special type of the data, 
and uh, as a result, you may query uh, the artifacts based on the version range. At the same time, we version not only the artifacts themselves, but artifact types. So when you change the schema, when you add extra properties or modify the constraints on some of these properties, you eventually create a new artifact type which, has, which, which still has the same name but a different version. So uh, it's like versioning the protocol, versioning the schema. We yeah. also support this at any moment of time. Uh, any artifact type may be represented by a number of versions and each particular artifact is connected to a particular version of its type. Hope this is clear enough. <laughs> uh, you mentioned about dependency. Uh, are you looking at Tosca or some other way that also describes this dependency outside of the uh, glance? Thank you. Uh, Tosca as a way to you know, describe dependencies. Uh, well, the idea is, yeah, I, I, underst I understand what Tosca is, but the Tosca is more for applications and um, we don't want that strong semantics as Tosca provides. Tosca defines much more flexible ways for particular, particular Tosca applications. We have Tosca support in Heat already, I think. It's already landed, or mm. it's going to land soon. Thomas? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe I can take that question. Yeah. So I'm Thomas Spratzer. I'm working on the Tosca specification in, the, in Oasis. I'm also contributing to Heat. And I'm working in the heat translator project where we're trying to consume Tosca models and uh, translate them in a way that they can be deployed using heat. And we're also discussing with the Murano team how Tosca could be used uh, as, as one possible format for importing Murano application packages. So I, I, I think we will make use of the, of the artifact repository. That's really great work and fits very well to what we have in Tosca because we, we also have dependencies not by pointing to a very concrete artifact, but we, we have requirements and, and, and capabilities. So we would more say we need an, an image or a binary with specific characteristics. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think we will be able to map the Tosca uh, dependency metadata to the artifact metadata. Yeah. That's it. So and, and, and we will yeah. have, have some yeah, discussions and in, this week. Yeah. And in general, I think that it, it's Initially, it we didn't need necessarily the the scope and depth of that sort of dependency relationship management, um, and at first it might be a little soft, as it were. Meaning, you know, ideally in the in the in in the grand future, there will be active like preventing you from deleting something that other things depend on across a, a dozen different repositories of different types. Initially, it's probably not going to be that stringent, or and so we don't need that kind of level of dependency management. And so, for projects like Tosca, for Heat, for Morana, which also have the inner concept of interdependency, mm -hmm. this is the goal of artifact type of the plugin, which defines the custom logic for build for maintaining the relationships or importing or exporting the artifact. It's their goal to implement the logic which maps their inner concept on the generic concept of uh, inter-artifact dependency uh, which is enforced by GLANS. The idea is that we may depend on artifact types which have, uh, on artifacts which have different type. So Tosca applications may have interdependencies between them or Murano applications have class referencing and class loading between them. However, if we want to use uh, glance image from heat template, which is in turn used by Murano package, then we may not rely on any of the inner concept of appropriate projects. We have to have some, uh, some concept which is above all the uh, particular projects, which is specific for all of them. And so we use uh, glance dependency relations for this, and it's up to the particular projects to map this concept to their subset of functionality. Does this answer your question? Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Okay, then we may probably wrap up. Uh, what I wanted to add uh, to finalize all this stuff is that OpenStack used to be a bunch of 
almost independent components. Nova were doing the virtualizing stuff, Lance was storing images, Heat was doing orchestration, Murano was storing applications, and the users who interacted with all these almost independent projects very often did not think about what other project does. I believe that now we have built quite a mature ecosystem of components in OpenStack. Now it's time to move the next step, to, to, to make the next step, to integrate them tighter. We actually have a single project, it's called OpenStack. And within this single project, the experience of end user should not depend on the particular component or particular sub-project. The user works with OpenStack. And so I believe that it's time for tighter integration of various projects within eco uh, ecosystem of OpenStack. And I believe that it's time to do this. And I really think that the glance as a catalog of the stuff should become one of the points of integration of various projects within the ecosystem of OpenStack. So if you have some project or you're thinking about running some project in OpenStack, think about how your project will exchange the data with others. And when you think about it, don't forget about Glenn's Artifact Repository. Thank you. Thank you.